Guys, this is your host, David Duncan, and with me is Aaron O'Brien. And we have Josiah Leroy of the Geek of Fire. I am so taped right now. No. I thought we were just practicing our harmonies. We were. Yeah, we were. Yep, boom, nailed it. It was, <laughs> it was uh, about as good as it could get, I think. I think so. We could do better, but we won't torture people. So, hey, we didn't technically do a non-Star Trek episode last month, although we did host Nerds in the Round Table. I know. That counts. We're a bunch of assholes. But, you know, Ghost of the Shell came out on on the 31st (laughs) of March, and we wouldn't have time to watch it and podcast about it and have it out in time for uh, this month. So we're doing it. We're front-loading early in the month. There you go. So in in case you didn't notice me say Ghost in the Shell, we're talking about Ghost in the Shell. We're talking about Ghost in the Shell, the 2017 movie. Talking about Ghost in the we, Shell. This is the first time we've been current Yeah. on the entire show. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did. No. no Rogue, uh, I was going to say Rogue One. That was on Nerdy Nomicon. Oh, no. We, we did do Rogue One. We did that episode we did, 7. We talked Rogue One, too. We and talked about th- episode 7. And then uh, we talked uh, Star Trek Beyond. We did that. That's true. That's, that was timely. Yeah. So. so it's our fourth time being timely on the show? Woo! Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. Considering most of Star Trek is, you know, between, you know, now and uh, between 10 and 15, uh, between 15 and 50 years old. So I'm doing this thing where I'm going through all of the the 2016 movies, you know, kind of working my way through. And uh, Star Trek Beyond is next to kind of just reminisce. And I'm I'm writing an article on my my cinema trek, if you will. No pun intended. (laughs) Right. It was so funny. David just choked. And uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) he's dying. (laughs) Dying. I lasted the whole exception. Remember this. Remember this, folks. I am replacing Dave. Uh, <laughs> remember this transition. So, yeah. This is a power play. <laughs> hopefully, they'll put my brain in the shell of an android. Hopefully, and hopefully, you're played by Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. I hope so, too, because the sex is brutal. <laughs> Now that I'll have a robot vagina, it'll just be so much better. Mm. I believe it's pronounced vagina. Vagina. (laughs) That's wonderful. All right, so your 2017 (laughs) trek through films. Yeah, that's about what, uh, you know, I'm about to embark on Star Trek Beyond, so I'm excited to watch that again. Now that you brought it up, I'm thinking about it again. It's Idris Elba and... It's yeah. a fun movie. I it watched is. it on the train on the way to my parents' house uh, a couple weeks ago. Unpopular opinion, and I mean this with all due respect, because pizza is pizza, and pizza is good. This is the worst of the three films. What? But that's still saying something, because it's still good. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think it was the best of the three films. When I say personally. worst, like I said, I, I mean that with a, you know, take it with a grain of salt, because it's still very good. I feel, Maybe a topic for another time, but I'm yeah. just saying. Sure, but I mean, I, I feel like this movie could have stood on its own and should have, almost could have been the first movie. Mm, almost could, except almost the whole introductions of with, the, with, the, with the Spock thing. My <clears throat> my ranking of these movies would be as they chronologically came out: one, two, three. Huh. Interesting. I mean, my friend at work, uh, he hated uh, Star Trek Beyond, and I'm like, why? He couldn't really say anything. I feel like that would have been also a good like. <clears throat> Netflix series, yeah, because there's a lot of 
smaller interactions that happen in beyond. Well, the, the whole idea is that everyone – the argument that Star Trek should be in the small screen. Star Trek is better suited on the small screen. It's, it's, a doubt. it's fun to see it as a movie but because you get the big budget. But you don't get all the little nuances and the stories and, and all the stuff. character yeah. development. Sure. I, yeah. I can see that. So hopefully with Star Trek Discovery coming up, we'll get something a little more like that. And people – oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, Mar- Martin Secu- – what's her name? Sequoia Green? Yeah, Martin Green. Martin, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, she her her character just died on The Walking Dead. Spoilers, and people are like, "Oh well, well she um." <laughs> well, we know what she's doing now. <laughs> uh, I, I read an article, and they said her her character's arc was ending anyway. Like they they said that that she got the offer for Star Trek Beyond as they were filming, or around the time they were filming her her death. How about Rain Wilson, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We I'm a huge Office awesome. fan, and Dwight Schrute would like his character would. Die thinking that he was going to be on a Star Trek TV series. Yeah, absolutely. How but, ironic. But the, yeah. the funny thing is, it's like in, in the office, he's so dry and deadpan, and Harry Mudd is completely the opposite. He's over the top. Yeah, Rain Wilson it, can be that guy. It, but as far as it, as far as it goes, I'm, I'm I'm really interested to see that. Although, I can't like, wait. this is supposed to be a darker, grittier Star Trek. Also, from uh, Martin Sequoia Green, she's been saying that and it's going to be a darker. I'm like, what is Harry? Harry Mudd? Not very dark. He's very like. Jovial and like, oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, he could it's be. Gonna be. He could be doing something wrong. I mean, he could be doing human trafficking. I mean, he kind of did that in the in the one uh, sort of Mud's women. But you know, he was using like you know performance enhancing drugs on the woman. <laughs> he was like a baseball player. What a jerk. He was. Making, he, but he was making the woman hotter. Yeah. So when they took their pills, it's actually pretty interesting. When they take their pills, they, they really get hot. super hot. But when they didn't, they turn like old, like old ladies. Wow. And it was like really interesting. He was so. like recycling old women. Yeah. Well, you know who hasn't? Yes. And, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a really interesting, in- interesting casting. So it'll be interesting to see what what they do with Harry Mudd in that. But as we mentioned, this is our non Star Trek episode. So we're talking about the 2017 <laughs> Ghost in the Shell. Ghost. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> Ghost in the Shell 2017. This is obviously the. Uh, Americanized version of the manga uh, 1995 Ghost in the Shell, but it's it's not just an Americanized. It's it's like all the action scenes from it, but then they took like parts of the story from the standalone complex, and, right. and then they kind of mixed it with the story of the 2005. I mean, the 1995 movie, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean. They took parts of it that were worth – that were, were fun seeing it. But the, the thing the thing about this movie is is like it feels like a reboot. It feels like at the end of the movie is when the original Ghost of the Shell could have happened. OK. Because, I mean, I liked the movie. I enjoyed the movie for what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, an adaptation of an anime. It wasn't perfect. Uh, going into it, I was like this needs to have more action scenes than what's in the anime because everything in the trailer showed – just shot for shot, the action sure. scenes from the anime. I'm like, there's, there needs to be more. And there's a little bit more, but not what I was hoping for. Well, just a couple of things. So this is obviously um, directed by uh, Rupert Sanders, uh, written by Jamie Moss, William Wheeler, and this guy named Kruger. And He butchered it. <laughs> he butchered it. <laughs> Eddie Kruger. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, based off uh, Masamun uh, Shiro's uh, manga, which is Ghost in the Shell, and obviously stars Scarlett Johansson as the major. Um, it's the idea of in the future we are getting cybernetic implants and we're enhancing ourselves and we're seeing the uh, emergence of uh, the m- brain and machine going together as one. So Melding, yeah. Yeah. Um, the As of today that we're recording – uh, we have that the film has grossed uh, $74.8 million worldwide. Worldwide. And and has, I don't think it's open in China yet. And has a budget of uh, – the budget was uh, $110 million. So we are basically short like $35 million so far. The, but the it, film is suffering right now. The film is suffering, but I don't think it's open. Last time I checked, it had not opened in China yet. And China is a huge um, – you know – Arena for making money in, in, in films. I mean, World of Warcraft only made, I mean, not World of Warcraft, just Warcraft made like, I think, 75, 80% of its money just in China alone. And um, I think when this opens in China, it'll hopefully at least push it where it needs to be. It, it might. And um, I mean, who knows? I mean, we're still, this 
what are we in the second week of this thing being released? Yeah, it came out the thirty first. So we're just entering that second week. Yeah. Really. yeah so I mean, it, it's possible that it could, kick, you know, kick in some more after after time. But so. the, but domestically, it's going to be considered a failure without a doubt. Yeah, like it, we're not we're not getting a sequel to this. No. Uh, but I, I think this movie overall will get close to breaking even. Now I was worried about it at first. Um, I reviewed it for the Geekiverse. We did a spoiler cast for it, a shorter one. At that time, it, <laughs> I think it had only grossed like seven point five million. Like we we did it fresh. Yeah, but you did it like right after, like like day after the weekend. Yeah, yeah. It, it, at that point, it wasn't. I don't necess- think you calculated in the worldwide gross. I think you only looked at the U.S. gross. When Correct. You, when you did it, and it, it wasn't. Uh, it you know it's a telltale sign. It's not doing great, uh, yeah. but I do have a little bit of hope for it in terms of getting back to where it was with its budget. It it was an okay film. You think it'll make up the the hundred and ten million that took to make it? I think it'll be close. I'm not sure if it'll quite surpass that mark or maybe it. China will make that money by itself because China's a huge audience. China's massive audience. World of Warcraft only made like less than a hundred million in the United States, and it made over three hundred million in China. Well, I mean, like tons of money in China. In for what it's worth, with the anime background, that might serve to be a better audience. You know, out east, maybe, and and, and I mean, I mean, I, I don't think this movie's gonna get a sequel, but I kind of like to see them take it. I would love to see a sequel to it because they they aped so much from the the original nineteen ninety five movie and the the standalone complex TV series. I would be so interested to see what they do with an original story instead of just copying everything. Which I mean, it was fine because I mean it's an adaptation, and I don't mind that they copied it. But I would love to see like an original Ghost in the Shell movie with a big budget and you know looking as amazing as this movie did. Because I don't care what anyone says about this movie, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was not a uh, you know I'm I'm not a huge anime guy. I don't have a bigger background in it, so I'm maybe not the best expert in this. But I did see a good portion of the '95 original that David let me borrow, you know, before this discussion, and. I think it was pretty faithful to that. Like this was a good Hollywood big screen adaptation Version of, of it. Yeah, I think but it, the story was different. Yeah, I think that misses the beats of the story, but I think visually, I think they nailed. Yeah, everything. visually, yeah. Um, should we just go through the plot real quick, or should we just skip that? Oh, we can do a little bit of the plot. I mean, it's well, it's uh, it's, it's more an origin story. You show Batu gets his a, eyes. This is where this is where the funny thing is that because the the. Uh, 1995 movie doesn't really get into the major's origins, really. It's it's normal. Like in the in the new movie, like she's the quote unquote first of her kind. Right. And in in the original movie, there's tons of people who have shells. Mm-hmm. Like it's not it's not new, which I, I think, which is also why I think you know the beginning, the end of the movies could be the beginning of. Well, I, I want to compare and contrast those movies in a little bit, but just real quickly, so. Uh, so Scar- Scarlett Johansson's character, the major, she uh, is somehow injured and they put her into a, a robotic body. Her brain is uh, – she has a human brain but it's uh, – Everything else is not. Yeah. So she – and she you know, she becomes part of this uh, anti-hacking group called uh, Section 9, correct? That's, that's the name of it. Yeah, anti-hacking. Yeah, Section 9. They're anti-hacking slash anti-terrorist. So she has a friend, uh, Batu, and uh, her chief uh, and they kind of – they're going after – Just different cyber, different cyber threats. Exactly. And uh, during this point, she uh, – they run into uh, these people who made her, the uh, Hanka uh, Corporation. Uh, they are getting – their top scientists are getting knocked off by somebody. And it ends up being somebody, this one guy who keeps killing them all. And we get this great <laughs> sequence where, you know, it's like um, – they're in uh, – the geishas are serving them. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And there's this big fight scene in, uh, where the major has to come crashing through and, and you know, uh, save. I love how there was like CGI fish on the wall of the window oh, because yeah. in the original anime, it was like just like a fish tank that mm-hmm. she like – that was part of the wall. Or it could have been – in the anime, I guess it could have been holographic, but I just took it as an actual fish tank. Right. And she just comes – Crashing through that, uh, it just yeah, visually, just it's so faithful visually. Visually, it's awesome. So there's this character named Kuzi, and uh, basically he is a prototype of the major beforehand, and he pretty much got messed up because he didn't really mesh well with their, his robotic body. His brain didn't. Yeah, so it's, it's he's like limping <laughs> and he, he walks weird. 
And he's got it out for uh, the Hanka Corporation and the scientists that basically put him together. Because they, they his 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 take on things is that they basically just left him to die, but he didn't he didn't die. He didn't die. He just kept going. And he's uh, obviously he's reaching out to the major because the major is believes at that in before that she's the first of her kind that there's nobody else. But obviously there they, she finds out there was a slew of different uh, uh, you know uh, creations like her. So, and what happens after that is uh, she becomes somewhat sympathetic towards him, but you know she still wants to figure out because they they don't remember what their past is. There's like this blurred past that they don't really remember because it's kind of been erased from the memory. And she starts recovering her memory where she finds her mother, and she finds out where she came from and how she was a runaway, and then the a vagrant. Hey, <laughs> yeah, and, and the Hank uh, Corporation took her and then they – And other vagrants and just experimented on yeah, them. Yeah, experimented, mutilated their bodies and put them into these machine things. So there we go. I mean – and uh, there's a big battle scene at the end where you know she takes on uh, the Hank Corporation's – one of their uh, spider, spider, spider battle tanks. and Spider tank. Spider tank. That's everything <laughs> that spider tank does. So, but it's it, it. That's it. Now there is a difference, and I, we will get into the difference between the two thousand. Uh, I mean, not two thousand. The nineteen ninety five movie, which is quite different. Uh, yeah. The, um, the setup is the storyline. There's similarities to it, but it's the the meaning and everything. The else meaning is and 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 the plot is completely different. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you want? Where do you want to go with this? Just uh, with where do you want to tackle first about this movie? Maybe talking between the first two, like, like comparing, comparing contrast. Well, that's the thing with the first one, the puppet master character, which is kind of supposed to be a kuze. Um, but the in the original in the original 1995 anime, uh, the the antagonist is the puppet master. The puppet master is an AI created by Section Six, which I guess is basically uh, Hanukkah or whatever. Right, uh, but the, he kind of evolves out of. Out of the out of AI and and becomes conscious and becomes actual consciousness, which and, is and he phases in on different people. And he can like hack into them and stuff like that and take over certain people. So yeah, and and the, the and you know basically like the original movie to me was so much deeper than than the than the remake, and that's I mean I was scared of because you know Hollywood tends to dumb things down for the American audience yeah. just so that people can can uh, digest it. But the first one is just so great. It's like it's very much like a measure of a man. Yeah. Um, the next generation episode where they're, they're trying to like this, you know is, 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 data, data, is data human or a sentient being? Is he sentient? Yeah. Does, does he does, is he count as property or is he his own person? Right. And and it's very much kind of how the original Ghost in the Shell is because the puppet master is an AI that becomes sentient, mm-hmm. and his purpose is that you know he wants to. Copulate, and he wants to, you know, because that's what humans, that's what sentient beings do. They they copulate and they pass down their genes to uh, a, an offspring, and, sure. and, and that's that's basically his his kind of goal. Other than he's also trying to hack things and figure out what's going on, what, what is real. And I like that question, like what is real, mm-hmm. like what what is where does consciousness really begin? Can AI become conscious? And this is something the new movie didn't really touch on. Not really. It's all about Major's background, which which is why I think this movie is an origin story, and which is does everything need to be an origin story now? That's that's I'm just like uh, does it does it need to be an origin story? Yeah, it, I mean you have a good point. Sometimes we get so caught up in just how it all began, it gets a little bit like uh. and and that's that's it's sad because if this movie doesn't doesn't like do amazing in China, there they were there will not be. Another Ghost in the Shell live action, movie. and I do worry because I think there's an there's a lot of Eastern philosophies there that uh, is missed on the Western philosophies because that's what was cool about it is that you have the Eastern philosophy is that you know it, it's different than Western because they believe in the communal everyone working together to make something better, uh, where Western is very individual like who you are is paramount to everything. Like that's who you are. Don't let anybody tell you or make you do anything you don't want to do. Well, and you know, a lot of the eastern side, it's like you work for your, you know, your family, your community, your nation, whatever, and what you particularly want, that's not necessarily important. And so when in the 1995 version where the puppet master wants the major to merge with them, that's like that's it's the idea that they could 
her individual individuality is not as important. It's not. It's no, not. it's not. It's like, it, it, and the thing is, he, he he sacrifices himself to merge with her, right? And and the major also sacrifices herself because, you know, when she comes back in, in that little child's body, she's like, it, it's it's she's literally been reborn, yeah, because she's she's in a child's body and. Like she, she tells Batu that I am no longer the major, but I'm also not the puppet master. We are the combined, right? And it's it's super interesting. It's super philosophical, and it, it I literally had to watch the first movie two or three times before it like really sat in, and I really was grasping what was happening in the film. It's it's it, there's a lot going on for sure. I mean, but and where you you know you get in the this current iteration. Scarlett Johansson's major is basically looking for her mommy and that's yeah. kind of where it just ends, you know, and which yeah. is – it has some of its touching points. It's nice. It's – I don't have any necessary problem. I just think you miss the, the real red meat great the real, part. The real, the real philosophical points of it. I think it, that's where it missed up. Everything else – I don't have a problem with. I think there's a lot of cool things visually, like you said. I, I think it's beautiful, but I just wish they. What about you, Josiah? Uh, I mean, I know you didn't finish the original film, but so jumping in as a relative newcomer, I thought like it was a good introduction for an American audience to an anime-based property because it, you guys are bringing up like differing philosophies. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. But seeing this, if I had no knowledge of that anime at all, I'd say, wow, that's kind of a crazy message. Like at, at times I felt – and I wrote the review for the Geekiverse for this. I, I brought up that I felt like this was a horror movie at times almost. In, a in, little bit, yeah. In a psychological sense, like yeah. if you're claustrophobic, like think think about that. Like you were, you were trapped in this shell yeah. and – that's you scary. are not you anymore, and like if you malfunction, you have to go. You have to go get yourself fixed. They gave you the memories that you think you know, but you're slowly realizing that what you think you know may not be the real thing. Yeah, it's I mean, that's a little scary. It, it, it is scary. I mean, if they would have played it more to the horror theme, I think that would have been a but great take for the movie. Can I just say? Whatever we are in this meat bag that we live in, you know, it's or, basically a show. Say, I mean, whatever our soul is, or spark, or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. we are trapped in this until whatever happens afterwards. So, you know, yeah, it, it's very it, sobering for sure. So, if we go blank and nothing happens, or if you ascend up or down or wherever you're going to go, so that's that's you know, that's one of those things that just like we are. It's technically like that, except we are organic. Obviously, uh, the other thing, uh, what we were talking about, you said. Uh, the oh the horror the horror of it of mm-hmm. the the claustrophobic so that's that's part of the thing that I was there was another point you were bringing out though I lost <laughs> it though. too uh, much warp core breach yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. see here the claustrophobicness of it and yeah um, I I thought like the overall message was different than like you said that of the anime yeah and that kind of was. Almost how it had to be for first time American audiences, and it's not like a, a disrespectful statement necessarily, but uh, oh, I mean, uh, Hollywood is different from what we see. With sure, I mean, when I showed my girlfriend the anime, she's like, "What the fuck did I just watch? Like, yeah. what? Like, I don't understand anything." Yeah. My, my that, wife that came happened. home in the middle of it and was like, "What are you watching?" Always <laughs> <laughs> supposed to the beginning. This lady just takes off her clothes and jumps <laughs> off a building. It's like naked suicide. Woo! Yeah, no. naked scar Joe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, it's just it's just weird uh, that you know how it is, and then she, she's like, "Oh, I like the new movie because like I understand what's happening." So I'm like, uh, "I mean, like, well, here's okay." So you know, Josiah makes a good point that you know if you're just walking into this movie, never knowing anything about the original movie, it's still a decent movie. The, all the visuals are there, the characters are all there. Yeah, maybe the main idea philosophy behind it is not there but let's face it there's a lot of people who aren't going to even get that philosophy any or even care to get it because sure. that that original movie is you, difficult you have to watch it multiple times yeah if you understood exactly what happened in the movie if you watched it the first time you were genius i don't i don't know i, I don't know how else to describe you if you were like perfect like i don't need to watch it again right i don't understand i don't understand you because i had i had to watch I, I mean i'm a fairly intelligent person. I had to watch the movie several times before it really sunk in. Well, here's the other thing I just want to bring out. And I, I, I grapple with this a lot. And it doesn't have to do with this movie. It's, it has to do with our culture today is that, you know, you get Blade Runner comes out and everyone loses their mind. Now, 
is this movie not visually just as amazing as Blade Runner? I mean, to me, it is. I mean, I think it has everything. It's that cyberpunk future. It is absolutely gorgeous. It has everything that you, Blade Runner, you know, and, and more because it's got like a bigger budget and the CGI yeah. is better and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, the stories. I don't want to say it's the same idea, but it has a similarity to well, what's it. What's the cyberpunk culture? I mean, it's similar. Right. So if you see Blade Runner and everyone loves Blade Runner, it's like, why can't you love Ghost in the Shell as well? And it's just the same thing. It's like, we, you know, you see the original uh, Star Wars uh, New Hope and everyone thinks it's amazing. But then you get a, a new movie that comes out that's, you know, in that same vein. But everyone like shits on it because, you know, like, well, pff, it's just not the same, you know. It's you know, I don't know. It's just I think we become so spoiled that everything. I, I mean, yes, there are some movies that do not make the grade. Sure. I think this movie gets pretty close to being a good movie. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there are a few factors too with the movie, like poor choice for it to come out this month in a month that included Logan, Beauty and the Beast, yeah, Power Rangers, even right. like. There, it, yeah, it, it came out in a weird month. There's so a much stacked month. There's so much nostalgia in all the movies coming out this month that is fresh in Americans' minds. Yes, Ghost in the Shell is niche. Push it to mid-April. Something where it's something, away from all the movies all these, I just mentioned. It's away from May, which has Guardians of the Galaxy, Wonder Woman, a new Pirates of the Caribbean film. Like, get it away from that stuff because honestly, it's a to most people, it's a brand new property. Oh yeah. Yeah, right, it, right. it is. Despite uh, uh, you know a huge star in Scarlett Johansson, who a lot of the people that would see this movie have seen in movies like the Marvel movies. Yeah, y- you've got to do something to get it away from that if you want to make it a franchise down the road here. Obviously, overseas it's a different story, and it's a shame because I think it could do well here if it was uh, maybe released at the appropriate time. Makes a big but, difference. But, but the problem, the the biggest problem with the movie, and it's not my opinion. It's just that all the controversy is frowning it. This movie, unfortunately, was probably doomed because of all the social justice warriors. Like, it's whitewashing. It's whitewashing. I would have loved to seen an, an Asian woman play the part. Maybe an unknown. Maybe, you know, Ming-Na Wen. I mean, she's she does Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that's a fairly action-paced show. Only problem with her is, I mean, she's beautiful, but she is... Definitely older looking. Um, I mean, I I agree with that to a point, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, Scarlett Johansson is a good ambassador for something like this. And And Scarlett Johansson can put people in the theaters, get butts in the seats. Exactly. She she, she can, but she's she's not. Well, but she... She might be doing more than if there had been maybe someone lesser known in the role. Because that's my point. But the thing is, I think uh, even even the movie studio came out and said, I think the movie... They said, oh... Well, they're going to say anything now because... because of the whitewashing. You know, it's like like DC with BVS and Suicide Squad. Oh, we didn't release the real version of the movie. Wait until the Blu-ray Yeah, I mean, these guys are going to spin it any way they want because they need to look good for their bosses. I I take... I I don't know. Something with the whitewashing... Sentiment bugs me a little bit these days, and I don't mean to be controversial in that fact, but like, I mean, do we, do we know that someone of that descent didn't, uh, you know, audition for that role? Do we? We don't know that. Like, I know we haven't you know heard I mean? anything. Like, I know there there are some factors there that we're not maybe quite sure of. Like, you know, David, we we might have someone who we thought would be good in that role. Sure. Do they have any interest in doing that? We, we don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it could be. It's I, tough. I think Scarlett Johansson was fine. I think she did an amazing job as the role. I think so, she, too. She did – her acting was good. She's very robotic. She was like robotic. She should have been. And even in the original anime, the character's super monotone. And, and even, yeah. I mean, Scarlett Johansson even brought more humanity to it than the original anime did. There and was I, some emotion I, there. And, it, and she did good. Even uh, one but, thing I wrote in the people, review was how she walked. Yeah. <laughs> did you notice that? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 She walked through – I mean she did such a good job. She was so faithful to it. And the thing is to me, I mean like sure, her name is you know, mm-hmm. m- you know Kusanagi. It couldn't be more Asian, you know, Japanese-sounding name. But I mean like 
in the original anime, she does not look Asian. Bato does not look Asian. They both look white to me. I mean, as as far as I, as far as I can tell. I mean, the boss, um, he he totally looks Asian. And it felt like that was and, kind of almost like a controversy, just to have a controversy in a way. And but the, that's what that's my problem with the I, social justice warriors. That people just right. and and all this all these people coming out hating the movie and they haven't even seen it because oh she's a white person playing a Japanese character. It's it's sure. killing me. I totally on, support. Guys. You know. A, I kind of brought it up when we were talking pre-show, and, and Robbie from Nerdy Nomicon was here too. And I said, if a character, you know, in a given property has an important social background, right? I think you know it's important to maintain that. Yeah. But in certain cases, it's okay to play. Well, that. I don't think it's a big screw in, you to. In this case, the major's a robot, so it can be anything. Correct. So yeah. she could be. She could have been a black man. Yeah, she could have been for, anything. Sure. And the thing is, to me, which is is hard. I mean, yeah, like if you're playing Luke Cage, Luke Cage should be a black man. Sure. But like we were saying, like Dark uh, um, a Dark Tower series that they're coming out, Idris Elba is playing the gunslinger. And he was white kind of – or depicted as white in the novels and stuff like that. But now he's you know, he's a black guy. And there's no problem with it because the race doesn't really matter for that character. Sure. No, not at all. The so, best person uh, applicable to that role should play that, that right. person. And I just don't see it as a big deal. I think – you know, I do believe Scarlett Johansson is going to get butts in the seats – uh, she can. She's a great actress. She can do the action, which is two combinations that are very difficult to find in Hollywood. And you know, she's uh, she's got that charisma too, as well. So I, I don't know. You, you you could get maybe some an Asian uh, actress to play that, but I don't know if she would have that pull to get people to it, come to come see it. But I mean, but I mean, if if she, but that's also the problem is that there's not really big. I can't. I can only think of like two female Asian actresses off the top of my head: Maggie Q and Ming Na Wen. Mm-hmm. And so, that, that's a shame. Like, so sure. why, why don't we have more Asian actresses that we can even think of off the top of my head? I, I mean, I, maybe you two can think of more, but those are the only two I can think of. I'm terrible just with actors and actresses. Same. I, I, I <laughs> you no, could, but I mean, but I mean, do you? I mean, can you say from a certain movie? I mean, like, I mean, sure. There's uh, Michelle Yeoh from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah. But again, she's on the older side. I think she's even probably older than Ming Na Wen. Yeah. But is that always? Uh, yeah, we we would love to have more diversity, but is it always like? I guess I'm trying to say, like, did – it goes back to what I said before. Did they they aud- audition for that part? Were they – did they have an interest in that part? Well, that I just – we, we, you know we, I mean? we have no like, idea. I think a lot of times – and, I, you know, I might be wrong. The whitewashing crowd will say, oh, my gosh, they're, they're, they didn't even consider it. They just want, you went straight for a white person. I don't know if that's fair. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's not right. You're, you're exa- maybe maybe you're they exactly did. right. Maybe they tested Asian women for the part, and they just you know Scarlett Johansson just had it all the, over what the other one. Sure. Did. What what if she was I the don't best know. person for that role? Yeah. And it, you know, color aside. Now, if someone else was better for that role, and Scarlett Johansson maybe wasn't quite that person, then then maybe we have a problem. I'm sorry. You well, could, there are certain scenes that you could put back to back from the two uh, the, the 2017 and the 1995 movie. Scarlett Johansson, and, you know, and the major character, they look in the cartoon version. They look, gave her the same exactly. haircut. Exactly. Looks- they look very much alike. You know, I yeah, mean, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I, I, so it's like. Yeah. Why, why There's so this? much complaining and, and controversy around the movie, and it, it feels unwarranted. I just to me. get it's aggravated. Completely unwarranted. I, I totally agree. I just think that you should go out there and see this movie. If anybody, if, if you like science fiction and yes. cyberpunk, you and see this and movie. if you like you know decent uh, you know a well done action movie, go and see this movie. Don't listen to the other reviewers who are giving it really crappy reviews. It is a decent movie. I agree. It, it, is <laughs> I agree. Fun. It, it, it is fun. It is action oriented. I cared about the characters. I mean, like mm-hmm. it, during the movie, I was like, I mean, like, you know, when we talked uh, on the Nerdy Nomicon about about Rogue One, like I, me and Aaron both had the problem, like we don't really care about the characters, and then they killed them, and it was like, well, it's not a big impact because I didn't care about them. But when when there was that when the when the garbage truck runs over the car with um the caregiver of Major, I was scared. I didn't want her to die because I did. I wanted her to be able to care for Major because I mean, I mean, Major. Sure, she's a robot, but she needs to be fixed because she's in a dangerous profession. I was like, I did, I was scared for her life. Right. I wasn't scared for anyone in Rogue One. I mean, I gave I gave this review a six point seven five out of ten uh, for our website, and 
for me, that's that's a relatively low score. But I, at the same time, advocate that you go see this movie. I definitely think you should see this movie. If you're into any of the things that we talk about on Synthaholics. Science Holics, fiction, cyberpunk, On, on Geekiverse, action. anything. Go see it. It's a fun movie to see. There's nothing wrong with it. To, for I mean, this is my thing. And anybody hearing my voice, I, I've said this over and over again. I believe in equality for all people. Agreed. For totally. you know, for exactly. blacks, whites, Asians, purples, equal whatever. opportunity. I want equality for men and women, for gays, lesbians, straights, transgender. I want equality for all. But let's not get politics so ridiculous where we can't enjoy a movie. I just want to I want to go see a movie and enjoy it. And you know, maybe Scarlett Johansson could could have been a different actress playing, you know, the major character. But I don't know who that person is. I have not seen that person. Well, that's the question. So let me ask you guys this. What did you think about – well, did you see Doctor Strange at yes. all? Yeah. Yeah. With the uh, ancient one uh, played by um, – But she was Celtic. I mean I heard she was supposed to be a Celtic person. I well, mean – She's she's supposed to be uh, Asian. That was a little – if you say whitewashing, yes, that was a little ridiculous. But on top of that, you but know – But is it so egregious and so- – <laughs> Do, again, I hate to sound like I'm, I'm being controversial, but like, do we know? Do we know that they were just like, no, you know, you're not playing this. We'd rather have a big name here. I, ju- I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the answer is. But to again, that. only only Asian actresses I can think of are Ming Na Wen, Michelle Yeoh, and uh, Maggie sure. Q. Sure. I mean, I, I, those are the only Asian actresses that register because all the other Asian actresses are like either bit parts or something else. And like I wouldn't mind to see more Asian actors and actresses. Of course and, and not. And as far as men, of course, as far not. as men go, it's 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 like it's um, uh, f- uh, Cho. Um, you know, Harold and Kumar. Uh, oh, right, right, you right. Know, um, right. Sulu. So, you, I mean, like, yeah. You, you I, absolutely I can't, want I can't, that. I can't, and, and there's Jackie Chan and Jet Li, but I haven't seen them in a movie in years. Or, right. Or, or, or seen them headlines. So, I mean, like, it's a, so it's a tough few. conversation to have, but at the it's, same time, it's it, extremely tough conversation to have, and I and I hate even talking about it because you get like lampooned and as uh, as some hateful person, and I just I just don't want to get the politics. I think we get so you know in, entangled with the politics of things, and just know that I don't have a bad intention towards right. anybody. And you know maybe there's sh- maybe there'll be a new Ghost in the Shell movie someday, and maybe they'll get a better sure. you know, actress to play that part. So. Absolutely, I, I'm the same way. You know what? I'm sure there'll be comments on on the podcast here that you know, <laughs> sure you know there will be. Oh, I'm sure there will be. But you know, <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> no, I, have, I, I don't think it's a, a, always a fair conversation. But I, I think you know we're all of the same mindset of we. Want everyone to have an equal shot at a, a given role when we're talking about films, particularly here. Sure. Uh, it, it just shouldn't. It shouldn't matter. It it shouldn't matter. Yeah. And and the and the and the problem is today. Like, there's so much PC stuff happening. Everybody gets angry at everything, and, and it just and, gets so exhausting. And and unfortunately, I think it's it's almost gotten worse. Since this most recent election, because mm-hmm. it was so totally. polarizing, and so like it's been bad for years. I, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's been bad for years, but I mean, like I think I think the social justice stuff and and all that has gotten worse because of the the recent election. It's a backlash it's just, for it's everything, just, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a place for all that, and there's a there's a place for people to be upset for certain reasons. And don't get me wrong, there are things for people to be upset. I just if I want to go see Ghost in the Shell, I just would hope that can I just see a damn movie. Can I just see the movie and enjoy <laughs> yes. it? You know and and I did. I was like, like, that's where I was at. I mean, like, and when I was watching the movie, I was like, I was like, damn, this looks so good. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I can't believe how good this looks. And I can hear the counter argument right now in my head. He says, but you know, how much would that be better if there was an Asian woman that was playing that part and she was, in, you were seeing that? Who knows? Movie? Maybe her acting sucks. Who knows? Well, all I'm going to say is this: is that on top of all that, what we just said is, I bought the original comic book. When it came out back in the 90s, I don't remember what year it came out. I have the original comic run of Ghost in the Shell. I, you know, Masamu Shuro, I followed his stuff from Appleseed, uh, you know, to his Dominion and all the other stuff he did before Black Magic. So 
I don't have a problem with supporting anybody of any color, race, ethnicity, whatever. Yeah. Sure. You know, I watched the 1999, uh, uh, 1995 movie. I, I saw the sequel, whatever that one was. I, it it was, goes to show two innocents. Which, which was terrible. I, it, was, I just, it was really bad. I did not like it whatsoever. But I, I've watched these things. So it's not – I. I am a huge supporter of any culture as long as the content's good. I want to see if good the story's content. Good. If the story's good, I'll be I'll be into it. So agreed. Don't give me bullshit that I don't you know I I don't want to support people of different ethnicities because that's that's crap. You know. Sure. Yeah. If there was a great Asian actress to play it, great, great. great. I would I would see yeah. the movie just the same. I, w- I wouldn't have thought twice about it. Yeah. I, exactly. I mean, Scarlett Johansson didn't put me in the movie. Ghost, in the, the name Ghost in the Shell put me in the right, movie theater. Right, exactly. You know, I, happen I to like, love, I love yeah, Ghost in the Shell. I, I like Scarlett Johansson a lot as an actress, and mostly, honestly, from her run in the Marvel, Marvel. Cinematic Universe. Yeah, like she, I think she's a really good actress. Right. So Ghost. seeing this was like, all right, you know, she's almost in a way like an evangelist for Ghost in the Shell. Hey, yeah. check out this awesome property that you probably haven't heard of, unless you're a hardcore anime fan. Right. And let's see what it does over in America. Yeah. Well, I mean, the 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 one thing that's <sighs> I mean, like back like years ago when they first announced Scarlett Johansson was going to be in the movie, I I was apprehensive about it because I'm like, this is going to be a PG-13 movie because Scarlett Johansson's in it. It's not going to be an R movie. She's not going to do the nudity. Uh, the original movie had a, had a lot of nudity in it, and and uh, it just just because of that, they're probably going to tone down the violence too. That that's the thing that bothered me about Scarlett Johansson being in it because I mean, like. They're going to have to stray away from how the anime looked visually. Well, can we can we talk about that? I mean, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, although she was not technically naked, she's in her bodysuit, you know. But I, I, I did want to mention that pretty close to naked. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it was. I mean, because it, it, it was flesh colored, but at the same time, they were super inconsistent. Like, if there was any problem with the special effects and and the way they portrayed the movie they were super inconsistent with the bodysuit because in the beginning of the movie they show her being made mm-hmm. and she's made and she's naked and her being naked is the bodysuit and there's all these lines in it that show that she's cybernetic but there's all a whole bunch of scenes where you see parts of her shoulders and her back like when she gets out of the wetsuit where, where you don't see the seams mm-hmm. on her body and I'm like be consistent, please. I mean, I mean, if I have any gripe with the movie, that's probably my my biggest gripe with the movie as far as like visual look is because I'm like she's supposed to have all these like ridges in her because she's cybernetic and that's how she came out naked. But then there's other points in the movie where they didn't put her in the suit where you don't see the. Okay, but all that being said, I mean that's some good points, but like just to have the balls to show up on set. In a in that, thin tight suit. Now that's, Scarlett that, Johansson's got a great flesh, bod, and but that's flesh colored. <laughs> that's flesh colored, but that just takes a lot. It's like doing a, you know, like you know, people have to do sex scenes or naked scenes in front of like a whole, you know, the, a whole the crew. camera crew behind you. Yeah, it's got to be really unnerving. And that she's in that and she's doing her her craft. That's really. Although I did read an interesting interview with her, she said she likes that suit better than the Black Widow suit because it, it, she feels she like she can move and breathe better. I don't think the Black suit. Widow suit looks like it, you can move too well in that suit. Like she said, she likes it, the Ghost in the Shell suit better than the Black Widow suit. I read that interview; it was really cool. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." I mean, you look like you're sort of naked, but she said she felt she said she felt more comfortable in it. Yeah, I'm like, that's, "That's that's awesome on her." I don't know why you guys think it's so weird. Every synthaholics I sit on, I have to wear a skin tight suit. You guys <laughs> so well, we 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 tell so. you. You could be naked, but I mean, like, <laughs> why you, you just keep down, on putting it on? Because I'm so damn hairy. That's why I'm so damn hairy. You just you, you call me you're Chewbacca. Just... <laughs> Speaking of being hairy and Chewbacca, have you seen the bad lip reading for episode seven? No, I haven't watched it's it. I have so retweeted good. it ironically. There's a, there's I haven't a, had a chance yet. There's a part on it where like Chewie, like she's being, you know, he, the, the nurse is looking at her and. <laughs> And looking at him, yeah. and and, he, and and she's like, "Oh, you're really hairy." And he's like, "Oh, you like that?" And she's like, "Yeah, babe." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, when do you get off work soon?" She's like, "Get off work in an hour." He's like, "Well, I'll be over there at the bar, you know, just being hairy." Oh you know, my gosh, it's that's awesome. Great. That's awesome! I can't wait to watch it. It's so good. Yeah, it, that's a that's a good also, point. Also, go watch Bad Lip Reading Star Wars Episode <laughs> Seven and all the other Star Wars videos. <laughs> I downloaded all three songs of the yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, he tells me he goes to work <laughs> listening to that song. No, no. I listen, listen, I listen to he, them on the way home from work so I can – because they're mellow songs versus Metallica. So I can I can go to sleep when I get home. <laughs> so the you know, Geekiverse was podcasting like last week. We had a whole lot of stuff to do. Afterwards, we must have watched the 
uh, Yoda one on Dagobah. And <laughs> exactly. And then the Tatooine one uh, with Kenobi. Bushes of Love. Bushes of Love. We must have yes. watched each of those like 20 times. Oh they God. don't get old, I listen man. to them all the time. I made Aaron watch them a couple weeks ago. They're so good. They're so catchy. Let's... You have to be really high. That's all I got to say. I guess I'm high Not all the true. time then because I, I love them. <laughs> they call me a stoner. <laughs> they call me a stoner, baby, because I'm playing those 20 times in a row. 420 oh. times in a row, am wow. I right? Wow. Um, yeah, I was bad at tuba, but I'm sure you like me to bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I was big in Japan. I, love I was it. king of ping pong. Yeah, I was bad at tuba, and I'm sure you like me to bounce. I they love that so much. I love it so much. Um Back get, to Ghost in the Shell. Get back to Ghost in the Shell. So Ghost in the Shell. Um, uh, visually, anything uh, you want else besides Scarlett Johansson basically being naked? Um, is there anything else that you want to just put out there? I mean, I I think the movie was almost perfect visually. They even had like the the dog that Batu fed, like they had the, yeah, like, the little remember, beagle or whatever. Be- yeah, like, like that was the picture of the trash man in the original. Mm-hmm. Like that was this picture because in the original movie it was this picture. He, he thought it was a picture of his daughter. Yeah, and then when they looked at it, it was a picture of his dog. Yeah, and then in the and then the in the new movie it was just a picture of him. Oh, it's a basset hound, right? Yeah, that's what those, those long dogs like that. That's a basset yep. hound, right? There were there were a few. I think visually, I, I overall. loved I loved the cues back to the original movie. Exactly, like they mirrored it very well. And I thought uh, there were – overall, it was impressive. There were a few hiccups. <laughs> I Every once in a while, I felt like the advertisements that they had going on in the city were like a little bit overplayed. It's a little silly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like just a touch. Uh, I, 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 I didn't mind them. Like, and, 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 I like the idea, but I think he's right. Sometimes it's like, why is a fish flying through this? <laughs> yeah. What is that doing for anybody? It was like a little much. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of like – Coruscant in episode two for Star Wars. Yeah. Like some of the things were just a little bit too Way ridiculous. over the top. Yeah. So. But the, th- the thing is, like, I like I like how the 2007 movie, uh, 2017 movie uh, portrayed the city. Oh, because, yeah. Because you got, you got um, the city every a transition between every scene. But in the middle of the original movie, there's like a 10 minute scene where it's just the city. And I'm like, that was a little much. And like, there's that song in Japanese. And I'm sure. I don't know what that song is because it's not translated in subtitles. The hmm? the, like the intro song? No, no, the middle, the middle okay. of the movie, the, the really high pitched Japanese. I don't know what that song is because it's not translated okay. and there's no subtitles for it. I'm guessing it has something to do with the message of the movie, but I don't know. I don't speak Japanese. I don't know what it's saying. There's that song in the middle of the original anime and it just, it just the 10 minute tracking sauce of just different random things in the movie and it doesn't mean anything to me as an American. Um, and I'm glad they didn't have those really long shots of the city. Mm-hmm. They were just shorter shots in between the other shots. And I love that because it just it just makes the world feel so alive and so real. I like I, the environment that it set for the most part. In, in in some sequences, probably as the movie went on, I felt like it was a little played when it came to the, the neon and the advertisements. But <laughs> um, like overall, I got to give it passing grades. Uh, but I, I would say it, it meshed very well with the soundtrack. I like the oh yeah. I like the grittiness of the of the city. I like the like you know like the you know like the wet floors and the wires hanging everywhere. I mean that's just fascinating. You oh, know? It, it's a dark movie that's for sure. Um, I like. I don't know who the actor who played Bato was, but I love Bato. Well, I just want to get into. He's, he's such a. I mean, like, I, I mean, I mean, I don't know. If, I, he's a pretty good actor, but I just loved him as Bato. He's the one he, of the guys from Game of Thrones. He's the guy with he the, is? I thought he was. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong guy, but I thought maybe it's the way his hair is bleached white. I don't rec- I don't recognize him at all from anything. But um, I love him. I love him. He is a he's badass as Bato. Well, I, he he is a dead ringer for Bato for sure. Um, what I was going to say, <laughs> I told Guy Davis he needs to, to cosplay as Bato because his hair is white. <laughs> He'd be hilarious. <laughs> he would be awesome, Bato. Um, no, but uh, what I want to say is. The character development, real quickly, just that you know, obviously, the major gets into like her background and what she's about. Um, I don't you feel like all the side characters you don't really get too invested in. Like Batu is probably obviously the second. He, he's stringer. the second most character, but in the anime, you got to know the rest of the team so much better. Yeah, like the the, the totally human guy who liked the his like his. His right. traditional sidearm, right. which they kind of like transitioned him into the the Chinese the chief, yeah, to the right. chief, mm-hmm. because because uh, in the original anime she's like, don't use that six shooter. I want you to have like a, a gun that can actually back us up. Yeah, and then it turns out the the 
the chief in the in the new movie uses the six shooter right. and he, he's total badass. I was scared. I mean, I was scared for him too. I was scared he was going to get killed. I'm like, no, don't kill him. He's awesome. Like it's just. You know, I mean, I, I know I, I mentioned this in, the, in our in our group chat that I liked you know, this movie better than Rogue One. Ugh. I actually, ca- I cared. Oh, I, cared, the I thing cared is, for the characters. Here's the thing: I is, didn't want him no, to no. die. All right, all right. Wait a second. I don't think I cared as much with these characters. I think I cared more about these characters. I think I got a little more attached to them. But I just there's there was not enough character development to make me want to. But only characters that cared about were, were Major Batu. Um, the chief, and then the Who's woman, it? and then oh, the woman the, who the, took care of uh, the doctor. Right? Yeah, the doctor. I only Those found only four characters I cared about. I only found myself attached in any way to major. I felt like everyone else was under underdeveloped. I I, I feel yeah. that there were, I feel like there there wasn't enough. I thought the only one second to the major is the doctor. Sure, who he, she had sort of a paternal relationship with. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, they had sort of like a paternal relationship that she was a kind of a mother figure to. Yeah, the major. Th- that's why there I was a moral choice there. There was some depth to that character for sure. There was, and that was the only interesting character. Batu, while I liked his character, and because I, I know his background, I don't, I didn't get anything from him out of this movie. If I was just walking into this movie and be like, oh, he seems interesting, <laughs> but that's, that's the about guy from it. Smash Mouth. <laughs> 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 With goggles. <laughs> oh. Oh. His eyes will be uh. walking on the sun. <laughs> hey now, I get it off stop. Get your game on. <laughs> I got weird eyes. Hey now, you're being ghost in the shell. So <laughs> I thought that- I just I just I, the thing I didn't like about the new movies version of Bato is that they didn't seem nearly as close. That yeah, was my they, second favorite anime. Character. I mean, I, I didn't care that anything would happen or not happen well, to no, him, though. No, oh, no, look, yeah. his eyes were blown out. Oh, great. Really... Also, they've got to find a new frontman for Smash Mouth. Awesome. You know, I like, that's what I fuck. thought. <laughs> 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 Walking on the fucking sun, am I right? <laughs> Walking on the sun. That'll do it to you. That's why you need That's why your hair is guys. blonde, idiot. You All right. So, yeah. Is. That's where I was at. <laughs> well, no, but the, I, I guess I didn't care about Bob. I, I wasn't scared he was going to die, but the. um. The woman, uh, major, and then the boss. I was I was scared for. I ended up caring more about the other. Um, forgive me for forgetting his name, but the other like cyborg. Scuse. Scuse. Yeah. I I didn't care about him, and I, I didn't at first. And I cared about him less whenever they did the whole thing. We're like, oh, well, we lived in this commune together on the outside of the city, and we were lovers. And I'm like, oh, come on! I don't think they were lovers. No, I they I were. Didn't they get were. That. They were. I, did, I don't think they were lovers. They were. I, I, I read. I, Dave is like I, I really some, adamant. I read some stuff well, about. He wants them were, to be. They were, no, no, I didn't want them to be. <laughs> I felt like the film said they were, and the, the way I they never were, got that at were, all. They were holding hands because he's like, like you girl. slept there and I slept there. They didn't sleep together. <laughs> they could have. Oh, well, of no. course they could have. But come on, right, if you no. know the answer, was the major in Kuze. Once lovers. I felt in like a they related with no, the, no, the they, idea of that. No, I thought they were more were, like a brother sister feeling. No, no, I didn't get that at all. I got that they were romantically involved. Especially the way he kind of treated her and looked at her um, whenever she was kind of captive to him. But, and then whenever they showed the flashback of them running out of the building, they're hand in hand. The question is what's waiting in the bushes of love? <laughs> it is. It's a woman thing with chicken feet and duck face. <laughs> 49 times we fought that, that beast. beast. Your old man and me. It had a chicken head with duck feet. <laughs> All a right. Woman's oh, bad ri- too. Bad That's what I'm going home to watch. I okay. told Maggie it was going to be Family Guy Star Wars. I lied. Um, <laughs> you can text her later. I lied. Just <laughs> Except the Holics got me on duck feet. All right. Um, <laughs> guys. Except the Holics gets everybody on duck feet. Um, yeah. So anyways, I just – I don't think the characters were ex- very well developed. And Kuze, I just – He's another – he felt like Anakin to me, like from, you know – He was whiny. From, yeah, from like uh, – from episode two and three. Interesting. Just like you want him to be good and, and to hate him and to – or all the things that you want him to be and just like – you're just more like, ah, oh, you're just annoying. <laughs> you know? It's just like why can't you just stop being annoying? You're just like a bad teenager, you it's know? Like, but the thing is Kuze is from the Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, but then they kind of merged him kind of with the puppet mm. master. Okay. Because she's like – because 
But he, his his end goal was different. At the end of the movie, he was like, "Die with me." Mm-hmm. Like we need to like stop existing so we can like you know go on to the the next life or whatever. Whereas the puppet master was like, "I'm going to merge." With we you. need we need to procreate, right? Which I think is more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, which, but I'm I'm glad they they didn't go down that that step, uh, so that uh, the major is still intact. So that if if somehow there, this movie does make money, there that, there, that there, there can be a sequel. There won't be. I, I know there won't. There'll be a reboot at some point, if at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is there is. I just read an article today that they're thinking about doing an, an anime series. There, there's a new a, a new anime from. The, I did see that from the from the original publisher. Yes. I think that's happening. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it seemed like it was greenlit, but I don't know. You know, like you read things, you're like. Okay. I'll yeah. What's, what's real? What's not? I'll believe it when I see it. Exactly. You know? so, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm on board. I want to see new ghosts in the show. Oh, that'd be great. It would be fun for sure. I mean, it's but, an interesting concept. I just I just got my fingers crossed for this opening huge in China because I don't think it's open in China yet because those foreign numbers and it's going to have to really those, do well there. Those foreign numbers haven't changed much since I checked a couple days ago, so I'm pretty sure it hasn't opened in China. Time will tell. We don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Well, anyways, Ghost of Shell, fun movie. I say, go watch it. It's not, it's not the greatest movie. It's not you- the best movie you'll see all year, but I mean, it's a new property for probably many of you. It's a good action movie. It's it's well acted, and it was fun. It's a visual feast. There's, there's it, yeah. There's a few reasons to see it visually. If you like going to the movies, if you like Scarlett Johansson, uh, if you are a video gamer, it's very Deus Ex. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if David yeah. may have yeah, I played like, Day of Sex, yeah. That's totally what I got out of this. Cyber um, it's, if you're if you like Cyberpunk at all. If you yes. like Scarlett Johansson at all, if you like great special effects. Don't people, all. do you like popcorn? Do you like sitting in a room full of other people? Get your popcorn. Do you like having pictures projected on a wall? <laughs> this might be a movie for you. That's very true. <laughs> I don't. I think you're underselling it a little bit, Aaron. In fact, I, think you're, I have to go to the movie right now. <laughs> I, I like all those things. <laughs> I think you're underselling the movie a very little bit, Aaron. But I mean, no, it's a good movie. It's it's fun to go. It's see. not take home movie. It's go and see movie, in my opinion. And, uh, you want to see it on a big screen? You I do. I mean, like you know, <laughs> I will probably buy this when it comes out on Blu-ray, and I'll, I'll get the 3D version because I have a 3D TV, and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous in in 3D. Um, I mean, it's not like a must-have in 3D. There's only a few must-haves in 3D. Like Avengers was great in 3D. The Star Trek movies were great in 3D. Avatar. Ava- I mean, but I mean, Avatar was specifically made for it. But I mean, those are like three movies that are made for 3D. This movie was good in 3D, but it's not like if you can see it in 2D, you might as well. But I mean, it, it was still fun in 3D. I, think I, also I enjoyed it. You're looking for probably a lot of action. Don't expect a lot of action. No, most. This th- is a, a thinker more than anything. It's not. I mean, it's it's not even a thinker compared to the original anime. Unfortunately, sure. But I think for the average moviegoer, it would be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, most of the action, unfortunately, you see in the trailer. There's a couple scenes that I aren't... was hoping for more action. It's I'll not. Say. Yeah, it's not Fast and the Furious. So no, no. Well, but it's it's a good movie. You should you should go and see this. You should, you should check it out. Support the arts. Support this movie. <laughs> Support yes. <the> arts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really not a bad. I think a lot of the people. Or, or panning it because it's whitewashed. Other people are panning it because oh, it's not as deep as the original, and it, it was never gonna be because this is made for an American audience. Don't, There's yeah, no don't let way that deter you from going to see this. At but all. The, but the thing is, if you watch the 1995 anime, like if you're a new person to that, you'll probably hate it because the, at the time, 1995 was not a great time for anime and being voice actor in, 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 in English. I think it's a good it intro, is, though, if, if you're looking to get into it a little bit. But, I mean, you didn't even finish it. So, I mean, like, it, it's hard to watch. Sure. It is a hard-to-watch movie, the original. And I think they did a good job adapting it to the American audience hmm. uh, with the 2017 version. I think so, too. I, I, I said right away this is, this is, like, the Hollywood edition of that anime. Yeah. So... You know, go see it. Form an opinion for yourself on this one because it's clearly going to be all yeah, over the board. It's, it's, it's definitely all over the board. It's weird too because you think about it. There's always – they say that even bad press is good press. 
Not in this case, unfortunately. This one's stuck in the middle somewhere. Yeah, it's weird because usually it's bad press. It's definitely in a limbo. If you get in that bad press that people go see it because they're like, is it really that, you know, is it that bad? But the thing is, it's not that bad. It's getting middling reviews. I mean, like you gave it a Mm 6.75 and that's basically what it's been getting across the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a little bit less than – it's basically a little bit less or on par with what you gave. I give it. I'd give it a little higher just because I think it is visually just a beautiful movie. I mean, I if, mean you, if you're a fan of effects for movies, go watch this movie. This is it's beautiful. I, I would have personally give it like a seven, seven point five. I, maybe. I mean, I'm in that ballpark too. If, but I, again, I go back. If you like Scarlett Johansson at all, I think she she was so good in this movie. It, it's worth seeing. Uh, she, she's on screen most of the time. And I do. I think. I mean, like you were saying, I think it falls down with little character development and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You just don't get really into them. So. And there's and there's not a lot, not a huge sense of urgency for anyone other than Scarlett Johansson, which is not like it was in the original film. Right. The original film, it just felt, it felt like there's more more at stake. Yeah. And and this one, it just feels like oh, it's Scarlett Johansson's past. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I I. I just wish they went a little bit harder on the cerebral, but it, it was never going to, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I don't have anything more to say about this. Yeah. But bottom line, go see this movie. Have fun. Have fun, people. Don't be stupid. So us. we can keep talking about movies like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Hey, if you have different opinions, you can let us know. Yeah. Email us at sentaholics at yahoo.com. You can check out our messages on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash groups of synthaholics. Josiah, where can we find you on the interwebs? On the interwebs, I am at a million underscores. No, I am at Josiah DeLeroy. Uh, you can catch my company, which is The Geekiverse, at thegeekiverse.com. And I try to write for them as much as I possibly can. Yes, so there's some <laughs> good crossover stuff happening over there uh, with uh, David particularly for the writing aspect. And then obviously, we're always on each other's shows, but... One plug, uh, check out Nerds of the Roundtable. That is a podcast that uh, rotates tri-monthly. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that term before. Tri-monthly. Between the Geekiverse, Synthaholics, and our friends at Artful Gremlins. The la- right. most recent one you would have heard would have been uh, our Lego Batman movie. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, the one that's upcoming, will, well, it may have already been out, but uh, it'll be from the Nerdonomicon. It'll be our I can't wait you to may not to have that. tried. It'll be good. We just love listening to ourselves. You know, we're very vain. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be careful what I said. We just want to like make sure. I just don't like... know what I say sometimes. I'm like, did I really say that? I think I said <laughs> trunk and origami a couple times on that episode. I may not be sure. Yeah. Yes. That uh, that is a uh, a very R-rated podcast. So enjoy, folks. <laughs> absolutely. Just like this one. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, I personally am at David underscore J underscore Duncan. The show is at Synthaholic Duo. Aaron? I'm at Blackbird2004. Check us out on iTunes. You can rate and review us. Please rate and review us because we need stars. We need reviews. We need people to see us because Give us stars. Give us stars. Give us your uh, blue horseshoes, green diamonds. Blue diamonds. And balloons. And blue moons. Colorful objects. <laughs> <laughs> Give them all. Write a quick review because it does help us the algorithms of uh, Apple and iTunes to get Are seen. Are insane and they need to be seen. I know, I know all the podcasts tell you the exact same thing. And we say this because it's true. It, it really helps us out so much. Like, subscribe, get a friend to comment, whatever it may be. Yeah. Also, you guys have a Patreon. We have Patreon. We do have a Patreon. So we you can support a, that way too. It's you know, if you don't want to write a review, you can just put in your credit card number and send it a, couple, <laughs> uh, a, a buck a, a buck a month or or a couple. A couple yeah, throw a on. buck or more a month. I mean, a buck is nothing. I mean, a buck out of your bank or your credit card is nothing really. It helps keep the show going. We've you know we we have to pay for our website every year. We've got to pay for monthly file hosting. You know, we want to come out to more cons and meet you guys. This is. The way to help us to be able to do that. Absolutely. Support our patrons. Patreon.com slash Synthaholics. Um, and trust me, you want to meet these hooligans as an outside perspective. <laughs> <laughs> it is life changing. Life changing. Life changing. <laughs> you will never be the same after you've met, met us and looked inside my trunk. They, they, <laughs> they burned my Neither house. trunk. <laughs> the old trunk joke, eh? Oh. I just have lots of origami from one of my past jobs there. He does, actually. I've seen this. It's true. Um, 
Yeah, and if you have a different opinion, if you feel differently about you this movie, if you Ghost in the Shell, tell us, email us, and we will read it on the air. If get you want to, if you want to get into the reasoning behind why you think Scarlett Johansson shouldn't have been cast in this, we'd love to hear your uh, thoughts. We will read it on the air. Yeah. Uh, so that is at uh, Synthholics at Yahoo. At Yahoo. Yahoo. Com. Definitely uh, let us know. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you. Um, for, for partaking. Thank you for the emails you do send in. You can also send in voice messages. We will play those on the air if you want to have your voice on the show. We love that. We love hearing from you and hearing your thoughts so that we can respond to them because uh, we want to please you. We want the show to be for you. and This is what we do. So if you have any ideas that will make it more palatable for you. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Josiah, for, for yeah, being part for of being this, this episode. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. As always, thank you. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Scholar and a gentleman, you both are. Oh. Scholar and a gentleman. And I, our I, looks I, are I exceeded I, by our wisdom. I wish I had my tie on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all so much for listening. Live long and prosper, one and all. It's over. I'll puke in the sink and we'll cry till we laugh. And we'll both shit our pants You're the best drinking friend I ever had I wasn't on actual recording <laughs> Son of bitch Son, Son yes. of bitch Son, Son oh, is, is the bitch <laughs> Okay, we tried this again Only this time we try with Russian accent Yes, with Russian accent there yes. We try with Russian accent My name is Mikhail And, and, and Mother Russia Accent. Not you. Right, you. you. <laughs> <laughs> she lost the motherland. Lost the now you're German. <laughs> Natasha, she lost moose and squirrel. Yeah, I switched uh, accent mid sentence around. there. I, I love moose and squirrel steak. <laughs> Canadian? <laughs> steak kebab. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is Russian ski ski. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>